Now, getting back to Mr. Baleo and Gaed, again, bad things can happen, can, when you're below the 200-day moving average or the 50-week moving average or the byline and or the byline. And, you know, let's look at the bright side, too. When things are going well, good things can happen, too. And one thing that Greg Morris taught me is markets just don't make an all-time high and crash. And that's why I did a whole presentation, or much of a presentation, I should say, on you have time, but you don't have unlimited time. So now we did have the sell signal. It took a while to have this sell signal kick in. But let's take a look at the market top, okay? Well, let's not count the closing high. Let's just count the high high, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you had like 20 weeks, almost a half a year for this market to really begin to, to roll over. So you have some time, but you don't have unlimited time. And one thing that I've seen with this, TFM 10% system is like in 87 when the market truly did crash, you did have a sell signal right before that crash, but it took weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to get to that sell signal. So everybody thinks crash in 87 was everything's going fine and then the market crashes. It was like, no, everything is not fine. Everything is getting weaker. Everything is looking pretty ugly in here. Hourly bow tie, I'm sure, okay willing to bet my life on that. We had an hourly bow tie before it crashed, okay? We had uh, um, a TFM 10% system, Celsius signal, and probably a plethora of other signals, but those signals took time to happen. So when you think about market timing, especially if you guys are trying to, I know you guys know, because you're traders, but if you're trying to teach somebody who doesn't understand markets, just say, look, the market just doesn't crash overnight. It begins to roll over, roll over, roll over. It's kind of a Chinese water torture. And then people throw in the towel, and that's when it crashes. Sometimes. That's when bad things can happen. As I've said quite a bit, back when I received my first sell signal for the TFM 10% system, I told one of the buddies, or both the buddies actually, that I work out with, and I said, you better talk to your guy. And he said, I did. And I said, well, what did he say? He says, well, he says, we're getting more aggressive now that the market is lower. And I, uh, I've had to wear my feelings on my sleeve. I'm not a good poker player, unless I'm drinking. But uh, that's another story. And I often get in a lot of trouble with my wife because I'll make a face, roll my eyes or whatever. But anyway, I must have rolled my eyes. And he got defensive. And he kind of got a little loud and puffed his chest out and said, said, hey, my guy's made me a lot of money. And I'm like, well, I think the market has made you a lot of money because I don't know exactly when you got in with your guy, but I know that the last couple of years have been pretty good for the buy and hold, okay? Even with the pandemic, you know? But he said, what's the worst could happen? And I said, well, you lose half your money and it takes 25 years to get it back. People often don't believe me when I say that. Now I just say nothing. <laughs> when I'm at a cocktail party, I'll just say, well, I don't know. It looks like it's going down to me and enjoying my drink. And I used to get in heated debates with people because nobody believes me when I tell them it could take 25 years to come back. And all you have to do is look at the charts. And I've seen people a lot smarter than me. This is Greg Morris. Write articles about the fact that it takes a long time to come back. So maybe I should refer him to somebody like that. You know, hey, this guy used to run $8 billion, five or eight, I forget, somewhere in between, maybe six. And uh, it's on the homepage of my website. And, you know, this is what he says. So anyway, the worst could happen is pretty ugly. Now, what I did was I put a line in here at 20. And a bear, the media defines a bear market as 20% or more drop, okay? And I would look back about 80 bars or exactly 80 bars, but this was a I did it on a monthly chart, so we'd go back and go all the way back to the beginning of time. And this is this little graph at the bottom just shows you how bad things get from that closing high. So if you're looking at the CFM 10% system and you had this plotted in the bottom of the S&P, you'd see that right now, for instance, we're 24% off the highs. Okay, so that's how bad it could get. And then obviously, 
if you take a look at where the media defines a bear market, that 20% territory, you could see that we pushed it at 20% quite a few times over the years. Now, one thing I'm wondering is, are these cycles exacerbated because everybody's got a computer and a desk? It used to be that way back in the day, you read books like Livermore and stuff, there was a big delay in the reporting of everything. So markets didn't move at hyper speed. In fact, the, the way Livermore made his money was he would watch the, I guess it was delayed tape or whatever, in the bucket houses, and they would give him an instant fill. In reality, if you were to try to buy stock, by the time they got the order in and it went all the way to New York and then it came all the way back through telegrams or however they did it way back then, Morse code, I don't know you would get a much, 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 much different price. But the bucket shops figured that most of these guys are going to blow out anyway. So instead of actually making the trade for them, they would bucket it, hence the word bucket shop. So I think that the instantaneous trading that we have now could exacerbate these cycles. And that's just my, that's just my thinking. But if you look at this chart, and we only have 2000 and 2008 to go off of, but if we go 2000 and then 2008, so that's what, eight years, and then we do it again now as we are, and I guess we came pretty darn close during the pandemic. We might have gotten there during the pandemic, I don't know, but it looks like the frequency could be increasing. I don't know, we'll have to pay attention to that. That's one thing I'm concerned about. Now, I thought it'd be kind of cool. I know you want to party with me, but if we take a look at like 40% or more drops, you can see that we've had quite a few of those throughout history. Now, the whole premise when I designed the TFM 10% system was to avoid those diaper change moments, a, a term I stole from Ian McActivy. And as I often say, unfortunately, Ian's, Ian's not, no longer with us. This is a joke in my head, but I better not because it might come out political. <laughs> so, let's just say I don't see dead people, so I'm not going to be calling out Egan's name tonight uh, looking for him. But uh, he was a wonderful guy, wonderful guy. And uh didn't even know he knew who it was once, and he was doing a presentation remotely because he was a little under the weather. And he said, uh, he starts talking about Dave Landry's Big Blue Arrows, and that's before I uh, I knew him in person, so I was kind of, I was flattered. Anyway, great guy, but uh, he calls it a diaper change moment. That could be any kind of thing that when markets blow up, uh, long-term capital management creates some diaper change moments, stuff like that. Anyway, so I updated the charts or the spreadsheet, and the diaper change is now 15%. At least it was when I updated when the low of the move was 36.10. I don't know if 36.10 was the exact low that held today, or if that low held. But getting out of the system, or sorry, getting out of the market on the last sell signal, even if you got caught up in that whipsaw signal, you would have avoided a 15% loss. Now, what was the cost of that? Well, if you did get sucked into that whipsaw, you would have lost 5%, okay? And, you know, whipsaws happen. It happens, okay? Spell with a silent SH. But what's kind of amazing as I'm, doing this live, just looking at this, the, the losing trades really aren't that bad in here, if you think about it. And most of most of the trades are black, and some of them, as you can see, are pretty good. Like right here, 186% move, okay? And the way you beat buy and hold is you don't occasionally lose half of your money. As I preach, market timing is less about beating the market. Forget about the holy grail hunt, okay? And just figure out how not to get creamed every now and then. And I think a simple little system like this will keep you out of a lot of trouble. Now, again, that whipsaw is one of you guys that took the signal and you were a little frustrated with me because I didn't pronounce the signal and I didn't take it, so to speak, because I didn't even notice it was a signal because it wasn't really within the designer's intent of the system. So I create a system. And I, I report it to you like this mechanically because it's a market timing, broad market timing system. But in general, I don't follow everything mechanically 
just like I showed you that hourly bow tie. Let's say it was following hourly bow ties and it's like, okay, it's green. Green means go, that's good. Wait a minute, what have you done for me lately? As Miss Janet once said, or Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. Uh, well, I'm gonna date myself with that reference, huh? The market's going sideways, so let's not get too excited. Let's not start kissing each other just yet. But so what? Let's say you took the signal and you lost 5% of your trade on that and you're a little upset. Well, guess what? If you took the next signal that got you out, you would have avoided losing 15% of your money. And unfortunately, and counting, I hope not, but it doesn't look too good at this juncture. So you could survive frustration, okay? But you can't survive devastation. Now, I know it's a little late to talk about market timing, but trust me, uh, you guys here, I know y'all know me, so just bear with me a second. But to everybody else out there in YouTube land or on DaveLander.com, keep in mind that way back last August, when the market was making new highs, I purposely waited for the market to make new highs before I talked about market timing. And those segments were called before the bomb blows up. And I think everybody needs to learn market timing. And guess what? You know, I see some friends recently, family recently, they're all down in the dumps. I'm like, why are you down in the dumps? Well, I'm a... Uh, I'm losing all my money. It's like, well, you don't hear me. <laughs> and it's frustrating. What's going to happen is I'm going to get a call when they're down 30%, 40%. And, you know, I'll show them the charts. So, well, it could go down 50% or more. NASDAQ went down 70 something percent, 73%, 4%, something like that. Lost half and then half again, whatever that comes to, 75% maybe. And it just, you know, it's damned if I do and damned if I don't. And that's why I said, okay, I'm gonna get ahead of it this time. And human nature never changes. And maybe because human nature never changes, and that's a microcosm of everyone else out there, maybe that's why technical analysis and trend following specifically still works. So where was I going with this? There was a sell signal. Yeah, here we go. That's a diaper change right there. That was 13%. And now we've taken that out. And we're well below that. So anything down here is greater than 13%. And as of today, at least when I checked the system to update the sheet, we were down over 15%. Uh, just real quick, as I've been saying, you know, some is better than none. As Greg taught me, the you always get something good out of Greg, as I preach almost every week. The tables they make, the actuaries or whatever you want to call the people that preach the buy and hold and hand a little script over to these buy and hope asset gatherers. <laughs> I've, I've met so many people in this business that, that have become traders because they thought they'd become a broker and that would be like a trader. And then they quickly found out that they're just asset gatherers. They're not, they're not trading. They're not timing the market. They're not looking out for the client's best interest, they are gathering assets. That's their whole job. The more AUM, I think they call it, assets in the management they get, the more money they make. But anyway, 81 years, that's how long these, this 12% a year number, whatever, I used to, there was a DJ, not a DJ, but a, I'm not gonna say his name, but there was this person out there, he's still out there too. And I think he was shilling some mutual funds in addition to telling you how to deal with your debt and finances. And uh, he was preaching just buy and hold and because you'll make 12% a year. And it's like, naughty you dog, Danny. <laughs> it doesn't have to be rocket science. Even systems with more on their name could do quite well. Think in terms of performance-based investing. That's, that's some apologetics for technical analysis that I've been working on lately. And that's one way of looking at it is, if things aren't performing, you have to get out of the way. You have to get rid of, of stocks. I drop an F-bomb when it gets stopped out, but you know what? 10 seconds later, I can care less. I'm, I'm already looking for the next trade. Again, shit happens. Might take 25 years to come back. And you know, here's the, here's the thing that's key. If you lose a lot of money, it's not just the money you lost, it's your feelings attached to that money that make it really tough. And as I've said, ad nauseum, one of my buddies who was down about 
thirty percent and worse was getting worse during the pandemic. He was over here, and I, I tell him all these things, and and he turned white. It's like. Dude, you've been knowing me for 10 years, you know? Watch the market in a minute. <laughs> Whatever. Um, this one's a big siege position to its fruition. When you're getting spanked, like last Friday, my positions were getting creamed, and I made the mistake of adding up the equity in my head, as I often do. It was a very expensive day, but but uh, one stopped out and two or three of those uh, actually came back quite a bit, substantially. And as I showed last week, we have one, uh, and I don't know where we are since it sold off and bounced back a little, but when I did the chart, it was up 77% for the year. Had we exited that, we would be missing a big, huge cushion. And as you know, the money, comes in chunks. And if you look at the pretty simplified show that I did, I went back about, um, I forget how many trades, 50 or so trades in the service, just two years, whatever that 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 adds up to. And I grabbed all the trades and I, and I made a little chart and showed how the money comes in chunks with the trend following. True about not listening, but some self-included need a slap. Yeah, you know, every now and then you need to be hitting the head with a halibut. <laughs> Anybody ever see that video? That I wonder if that's fake or real, but this is woman newscaster or something in a storm and a halibut comes flying out of nowhere. 